Crystal. This is Peyton Anders. This is Ed, their dad. And this is Francis, their mom. And this is a movie about the house that Ed built and how it might be a model for moving away from dependence on fossil fuels. Ed is an architect, and in the 70s, he read a book that showed how people have used the sun for over 2,500 years. For example, in 212 BC, Archimedes reportedly used giant mirrors like a magnifying glass to destroy ships of invading Romans. And so Ed decided that he would use solar energy in his house. In 1982, when he built a house in Massachusetts, he put solar air heating collectors on the roof. Warm air collected in the panels and was circulated around the house, and Peter and Anders stayed nice and warm. So why don't we all do this? Well, there are probably two main reasons. First, sunlight isn't always available. Ed, for example, had electric resistance heaters to back up the solar collectors. And second, historically, we haven't been able to draw electricity very efficiently from solar energy. In 2006, however, Ed tried something new. Ed had read that photovoltaic panels had become more efficient at collecting energy, so he switched his solar air collectors to photovoltaic panels. Then he did something else. He had read about a new technology called a low temperature heat pump. The low temperature heat pump is a device that squeezes heat out of the air. Well, it's more complicated than that, but it heats a house even if it's freezing outside. And if you run it in reverse, it cools your house too! When Ed switched to the new photovoltaic panels and installed the low temperature heat pump, his electricity bill went down by 50%. And when the photovoltaic panels produce more energy than the house uses, the town pays Ed for the energy he produces and his electricity meter runs backwards. No oil, less coal powered electricity, and more efficiency. Some people have hybrid cars. This is a hybrid house. Can we move away from fossil fuels? Should we? Obviously we should. Their supply is finite and their effects are bad for the environment. Our challenge is to avoid the seduction of relying solely on fossil fuels when they are abundant and easy, because they won't always be. Meanwhile, the history of solar energy alone shows us that we have an age-old recognition of the usefulness of alternative energy sources. What's left is whether we have the technology for these sources to meet a substantially greater portion of our energy needs. So what is the formula for our energy future? First, we must demythologize both the problems and the promise of solar and other alternative energies. Then, we must move towards a hybridization of our energy supply. Like at Ed's house! Then, as alternative energy sources become stronger and more readily available, and as technologies like low temperature heat pumps use this energy more efficiently, then we can transition from a heavy reliance on fossil fuels to a more enduring age of clean and reliable energy. But lastly, this formula will be nothing but a formula unless more of us become early adopters like Archimedes in 212 BC and architects like Ed today.